for the entire government. And, you know, um, we have a different vision for this campus. We believe in student empowerment. We believe in student unity. We believe in inclusivity for every single organization and every single group on this campus, regardless of who they are, regardless of whether they're a minority organization. And we can't do this alone. The only way we can win this election, and the only way we can bring United Council to this campus is through you guys, each and every single person in this room. If, if each and every single person in this room got out 10 people to vote, 10 people, I would say there's at least 10 people in this room. If each of you got 10 people, that's 100 vo people, 100 votes. So we as students, regardless of how small your organization is or whatnot, <coughs> we as students do have legitimate power. We do have legitimate authority. And we just need a president who believes in that power, who believes in that authority, who believes that people should be treated equally and fairly, who believes that we as a student body should have <laughs> a say in what goes on across the state and holding our legislatures accountable for what they do in Madison because you know we live in a society that says children are our future and if you're going to tell us that we are the future then you better give us more bang with our buck when it comes to tuition and financial aid you know yeah. <laughs> um, and, yeah. and so in, in conclusion let me just say this and this is, you know, in relation to a lot of what happened in Impact, because when we had the whole Impact thing going on, and when we had the whole, whole entire Impact debate going on, there was a lot of members of student government that were silent. There was a lot of members of student government that just went along with what the majority did, because obviously, apparently, for some reason, they think the majority is always right, and I don't think that. I think. Oh, it has only been minority groups and minority opinions in every single civilized society that has advanced the cause of human beings. And there was a lot of people quiet about impact. You know, there was an injustice being done to this organization. And you have individuals who, by the way, will be running for president, who, by the way, will be running for vice president, who were completely silent in what happened to this, to this particular organization. Well, here's what I believe. You know, 40 or so years ago, there was a young preacher who was the leader of a civil rights movement. <laughs> and uh, he, he got a lot of criticism because at the time he was only a civil rights leader and only a preacher. And the Vietnam War was going on. And there was a lot of people saying, well, civil rights in Vietnam, civil rights in war don't, don't really mix. You shouldn't speak out against it. And they were telling him, well, you're going to lose a lot of support, which, by the way, he did. Mm -hmm. But he stood in front of the nation, and he said that there comes a time when silence is betrayal. There comes a time when silence is a betrayal to the, right, to the rights of minorities. There comes a time when silence is a betrayal to student rights. There comes a time when silence is a betrayal to everything that we stand for as a student body everything that we stand for as a student government. And so I am asking you tonight that from here on out, we're, we're, I'm going to face a lot of pressure. I'm not very well liked in my student government right now, but I don't think I should be Mr. Popularity of the Senate. I believe I should stand up for what's right. But I'm going to get a lot of heat. I've already been getting a lot of heat. I'm going to get a lot of pressure, which I already have. You know, there were some senators who sponsored my legislation who've been getting dirty looks in the office, who have, you know, it, it's a political risk, but it's a risk that people need to be willing to take. And so when it comes to each and every single one of you, you know, there's going to be a lot of talk about a new movement of United Council on this campus, and you're going to be told things, and you're going to be told to think a certain way and to act a certain way, and, you know, we can't be silent. We cannot afford to be silent at this moment in time because we're at a turning point in the direction in, uh, for Whitewater student government. We are at a turning point where we cannot be silent. And so I'm asking each and every single one of you to come together, to unite with me, 
And in the final analysis, I, I keep saying I'm going to end here. I will end now. <laughs> there was once a uh, there was once a a famous Greek philosopher, ast astronomer, uh, mathematician. His name was Archimedes, and he once said, uh, "Give me a place to stand, and I shall move the earth." And I think that's an interesting thing to reflect on. Because what he was talking about was a lever. A lever which could be implored that could move even the most powerful of objects. My fellow students, each and every single one of you, members of peace, and all of the organizations that I know several people are, are members of, tonight and throughout this, the rest of the semester, all the way up until April 7th, and all the way up until April 8th, you are that lever. So you must stand up and not be silent. You must stand up. You must stand up. We all must stand together and we can change this campus and make it better, even against remarkable odds. I truly believe that. I thank you so much. I ask you to sign uh, <laughs> my uh, form to be on the ballot. Um, it's divided into districts, off campus, Esker, Drumlin. But uh, I implore your support, and uh, I thank you so much. You guys do great work in this organization, and you guys are all about um, equality. You guys are all about students coming together and affecting change, not only on this campus, not only on this state, but all across this entire world. And I think that's powerful stuff. So thank you so much.